Hi, Jeff Cote with Pacific Yacht Systems. What we're going to talk about next is NME 2000. And what about NME 2000? How do you go installing an NME 2000 backbone or network on your boat? As you're buying marine equipment, you'll find that a lot of manufacturers are including these little devices, these T's or these cables, what are called drop cables or backbone cables within their equipment. And you're supposed to figure a way on how to interconnect all this equipment so that you can be transmitting NMEA 2000 data across your many different types of manufacturer's equipment. So when you're actually tackling this project, the first thing that I always recommend is you want to draw this out. Don't go about building your NMEA 2000 network simply from your mind and just tackle it. Because what's going to happen is you're probably going to start creating these loops, these branches, and it's not going to go as well as you'd like. So the best thing is think about all the different devices that need to be on your NMEA 2000 network and probably draw them out at the bottom of a page. Okay? Take a landscape, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, put all your devices at the bottom. And then now that you've got all your devices and put them kind of order them in the sequence that you would go maybe from fore to aft or whatever you want to think about, but put them all on the bottom. And then what you're going to start drawing is these little devices are going to be the T's. Here's what's the trick. The distance between a device and a T can be only about 18 feet or six meters. So you've got to make sure that your backbone snakes throughout the boat so that any device is only a maximum of 18 or six meters from this T. Now it's not that much of a challenge when you've got maybe a Grady White 28 feet and you start running a cable maybe from the transom at the aft of the boat, inside the boat, maybe up the console, up to the radar tower, pretty straightforward where you might have a GPS antenna. But as your, the boats get larger and larger, you've got to start being creative about where's that backbone cable going to be snaking through my boat and so that I can have only six meters or 18 feet of distance between the backbone cable and an endpoint. So that's one thing to think about. Also, what I always recommend is don't build your network just for today. Think about the future, right? When we're actually routing a cable from the engine room and we're maybe going through the salon in a boat and going directly to a flybridge, let's say for example, on a Marion 490, I'm actually gonna install a cable and I'm gonna have two different cable lengths and I'm gonna actually create, I'm gonna prepare for a splice, meaning I'm gonna have a place where I'm potentially anticipating one day at the lower helm, maybe, to actually have another T be interconnected to. So when you're actually doing an EMEA 2000, don't just do what you think you need today, but look forward. Think about what else you might be putting on your boat because that's the beauty of NMEA 2000 is that you can interconnect multitudes of devices on this backbone, right? And so you don't have to run cables from all these different endpoints back to a single point. It's not hub and spoke, it's a bus topology. And that's really nice. Uh, the other thing too is as you add more and more network, you're going to have to think about where do you power that ME2000 backbone. This is a cable generally on average, and there's all these different rules, but on average you want to power your backbone in the middle of the backbone and so that the loads are evenly distributed on both fore and aft, left and right of your backbone. You're going to want to make sure as well that you've got Terminators, and this is where writing it down and putting a plan is really important. You need a male terminator on one end of the backbone and a female terminator at the other end of the backbone. Don't have more than two. Your network's not going to be reliable. Only two terminators at the end of the backbone. And the other thing, too, to think about is when you're running your cables between A's and B's on your boat, and I remember the first time I installed the NMEA 2000 network in about 2007, 2008, I made this error, so learn from my mistakes. There's a male end and a female end. So you've got to run, when you run a cable from aft to front of your boat, always run one cable orientation at a time because if you run male-female and then you run male-female, you're going to be inverted and you're not going to have the right joint in between the two cables and you're going to have to rerun that cable again. So remember, the cables actually have both a male end and a female end. So those are the sort of things that you're thinking about when you're building an MEA 2000 network. If you've got further questions or you're thinking about tackling this project, reach out to us at Pacific Yacht Systems. Thanks for watching.